thy nakedness. Do not appear. So we teach our women to cover up. We teach our women to cover up that their nakedness do not appear. Do not appear. Uh, we like sometimes all women bodies are different. Some women uh, they get real physically hot. I mean, body gets get overheated. And some say, well, Pastor Jennings, I can't wear stockings because my body would get so hot I can't take it. I tell them, well, if that's the case, then when you got your dress and your skirt on, then it better come all the way down to your ankles. That's right. Because I got to keep this scripture enforced. And that's the shame of thy nakedness. I got to keep Do that scripture appear. enforced. Right. I got to keep that scripture enforced. That's right. Huh? And that's the shame, that's the of, shame thy nakedness. of thy nakedness. Do not appear. All right, let's get in reference to nail hardener, which is a form of makeup pretty much. That's for your nails and things like that. Give me the fourth chapter of the book of Jeremiah in verse 30. Jeremiah chapter 4 and at verse 30. All right. When thou art spoiled. What wilt thou do? What Will thou do? Though thou closest thyself Though you with crimson. Close yourself with crimson. Though thou deckest thee with ornaments of gold. And you have your gold, which is your jewelry on. Though thou rentest thy Though face with paint. Though you rent your face with paint, what good is all this makeup? In vain shalt thou make thyself fair. All that nail hardener, which is nothing but clear nail polish, is in vain. In vain. Just be the way God made you. The That's way right. God made you is beautiful enough. That's right. All right. Next question. Yes, sister. How are you? I'm from Elroy, Arkansas. Wonderful. We were up there, uh, God, we were at youth. Well, you know. <laughs> anyway, uh -huh. actually baptized him. Good. And he was all Kill it dead. Well, first and foremost, if a man is married to a woman and the woman have a living husband, then that woman is living in adultery and the man's living in fornication. Because when a man is married to a woman and the woman got to live with her husband, he actually got another man's wife. So that's really not his wife. So in that situation, that man is absolutely free. All right? Ain't nothing wrong with that. We, we knew that. I ain't going to be tied down with this person forever. Not if he ain't worth my time. Exactly. Uh -huh. I ain't going to be married. So. Exactly. So you, 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 you do it the way the Bible itemizes for your soul and your protection. So I'm okay. You all right. Okay. Yes, sister. <laughs> Greeting, sister. Mm -hmm. I've been a seven-day Adventist just about all my life. Mm-hmm. Yes. And the evening habits, of course. Mm -hmm. And then one other about the time of the women's service. Mm -hmm. If you don't mind addressing this question. All right, let's get this now. <laughs> Give me a look of Colossians about let no man judge you. Right. Quickly. I believe 317, if I'm correct. Come on, son, clock is ticking. Let's move quick. Colossians chapter 2. All right, chapter 2. Let no man judge you in meat or drink. Colossians chapter 2 and verse 16. All right, begin at verse 15. At verse 15. And having spoiled principalities and powers. Having spoiled principalities and powers. He, he made a show, he of, made them a show openly, of them open. Triumphing over them in it. What is it? At verse 16. Listen good. Let no man therefore judge you in meat. Let no man judge you in meat. Or, now. Mm -hmm. One, in the Old Testament, you couldn't eat pork. In fact, you couldn't eat shellfish. That was part of the diet. But the problem with the seven-day Adventists, they forgot that the Old Testament was a shadow of good things to come. So the question is, what did these things represent in the New Testament church? 
abstaining from certain meats represent being separated from other people. In the 10th chapter of the book of Acts of the Apostles, when the apostle Peter was up on a housetop, God showed Peter people as unclean meat. That's right. For he saw the sheep as four corners come down three times, and he saw four-footed beasts, creeping things, and fowls of the air. And the Lord told Peter, Arise, slay and eat. Peter told the Lord, Not so. Nothing unclean or common will come into my mouth. The Lord said, What I have cleansed, don't you call common. And the vision came three times. After that, three men come from the house of unclean people. Come from the house of Cornelius, and Cornelius was a Gentile because he was an Italian. Three men come and told Brother Peter the vision. Thank God that Cornelius had, and the Lord told Peter, go, doubting nothing. Peter came onto the house of Cornelius, and Cornelius began to told him how the vision that he had, and oh my God, Peter went to work, and why Peter just spake the word, the Holy Ghost fell on the house of Cornelius. So unclean meat represented unclean people. So now in the New Testament, the Lord implement law and says, let, let no man nobody, therefore, don't let nobody therefore, judge you in meat, judge you in meat, or in drink, or in drink, or in respect of an holy day. Don't judge them in respect of a holy day. Or of the new moon. Don't even judge them in reference to the new moon. Or, or of the Sabbath days. Don't even judge them in reference to the Sabbath days. Which are a shadow. No, it's the real thing. Which are a shadow. It's the real thing. Which are a shadow. It's nothing but a shadow of what? Of things to come. But what? But the body of Christ. Sabbath meant rest, as you know. You had the rest from your natural work. Well, the Bible says now if you don't work, you don't eat. So if shadow, if Sabbath meant you had the rest because what the Lord did, of course, on the seventh day, he rested. And the people took that scripture and said, well, that, everybody that have church on Sunday is wrong. It's only the right to have church on Saturday. Listen, God is bigger than Saturday. That's right. God is bigger than one day. That's right. My God, man, I can wish up and serve God any day and every day. Any day. You better give me the book of Luke, if I'm correct, chapter mm -hmm. one, chapter quickly. One. Amen. Begin at verse uh, 71, 71, if I'm correct. Come on, son. Luke, Luke chapter quick. one and verse 71. All right. That we should be saved from our enemies. That we may be saved from our and enemies. And from the hand of all that hate us. Yes. To perform the mercy promised to our fathers. Uh -huh. And to remember his holy covenant. All right. The oath which he swear unto our father Abraham. The oath which he swear to our father Abraham. That he would grant that unto us. That he would grant unto us. That we being delivered out of the hand of our enemies. Delivered out of the hand of our enemies. Might serve him without fear. How? In holiness. How? In holiness. How? In holiness. How else? And righteousness. When? Before him. How many days? All the days of our life. No, just Saturday. All the days of our life. No, just Saturday. All the days of our life. We come along and wish up God Sunday, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, That's Thursday, right. Friday, Saturday, and Sunday, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday, Sunday, Monday, every day. Every day. Now. If you want to have church on Saturday, I can't judge you. No. You, you, ju you can do that if you want. Mm -hmm. Let's get esteem one day higher than the other. Higher than the other. That's right. That's right. <laughs> That's right. Hurry, right. take God. And then give me the fourth chapter, first Timothy. So much Bible coming to my mind. Mm -hmm. I want to show you how if anybody okay, tell you it's a sin to eat pork today, it's a devil's doctrine. That's right. I'm going to show you that in the Bible. That's right. All right. Now, if you, if you don't, don't want to eat pork, that's your, business. that's your business. That's your right. Right. But you can't tell me a person is wrong if they choose to do it. That's right. If you choose not to do it, I can't judge it. Right. All right, read quick. Romans chapter 14, and we'll start at verse 5. Follow me. One man esteemeth one day above another. Now, and you got the so-called seven-day Adventists, they esteem Saturday above all the others. Right. So they come to church on Saturday and whatnot, and fine. Fine. Good. Okay. Nothing wrong with that. Mm -hmm. I, I don't bother you. I don't mm -hmm. tell you going to hell for having church on Saturday. I cannot tell you that. We just had church last night. <laughs> That's right. 
How can I tell you that? That's right. All right. One man esteemeth one day above another. One man esteem one day above the other. Another esteemeth every day alike. That's what we do. Every right. day is alike to us. That's right. Every day is alike. We don't esteem one day higher than the other. Let, uh -huh. let every man be fully persuaded in his own mind. All right. He that regardeth the day. He that regardeth the day. Regardeth it regardeth unto the Lord. Regardeth it unto the Lord. And he that regardeth not you the see, day. You see, we regard at, at the day we wish up unto the Lord. We right. don't regard unto men. That's right. But he that regardeth if not to the Lord he doeth not regard it. All right. He that eateth, he that eateth, eateth to the Lord. Eateth to the Lord. For he giveth God thanks. He give God thanks. And he that eateth not to the Lord he eateth not and giveth God thanks. All right. God First thanks. Timothy chapter First Timothy four. Chapter begin four. at verse one. Now the Spirit speaketh expressly, speaketh expressly that in the latter times, in the last days, some shall depart some from the faith. Shall leave the things that God preached about, giving heed to seducing spirits. What kind of spirit come along? Seducing spirits. And what do that seducing spirit bring? And doctrines of devils. Now let's investigate the doctrine that the devils bring. Speaking lies and hypocrisy. See, one thing in the devil's doctrine, there's lies and lies, having, and it's full of hypocritic. Having their conscience seared with a hot iron. And then we preach these lies that don't phase them because their conscience is seared with a hot iron. Forbidding to marry. What is in the devil's doctrine? Forbidding to marry. And what else is in the devil's doctrine? And commanding, and commanding to abstain from meats. What kind of spirit bring that? Seducing spirit. What kind of doctrine is it? Doctrines of devils. What's in the doctrine? Commanding to abstain from meat. What kind of spirit is it? Seducing spirit. What kind of doctrine is it? Doctrines of devils. What kind of spirit is it? Seducing spirit. What kind of doctrine is it? Doctrines of devils. Any man tell you that you can't eat pork today is a seducing spirit and it's the devil doctrine because right. the kingdom of God, according to what Paul said, is not in meat. Or drink. But that's right. And then what is that? Romans chapter 14 and at verse 17. Parliament. For the kingdom of God. The kingdom of God is not me. That, listen, that beef Hallelujah. don't save you. That's right. That chicken don't save you. That's My right. salvation is not in the bird. <laughs> that's right. <laughs> that's, that's right. My salvation is not in the bird. Amen. It's not in a hall. Amen. It's not in the turkey. That's My right. salvation is in Christ Jesus. For the kingdom of God. The kingdom of God is not me. It's not me. Meat and drink, and it's not drink, but righteousness, but it's living right and peace. Glory to God, and it's peace and joy. Glory to God, and it's joy in the Holy Ghost. In what? In the Holy Ghost. In what? In the Holy Ghost. Hallelujah! Glory to God. Hallelujah! In the Holy Ghost. Hallelujah! That's where your salvation lies. That's right. Amen. So you can wish up God any day. For meat. For meat. Destroy not the work of God. Destroy your salvation. That's right. Hallelujah. Meat destroy does not, not destroy the work of God. God's work. That's right. It don't destroy it at all. Amen. But what? All things indeed are pure. All things. Wait a minute. Mm. What? All things indeed are pure. <laughs> what about that pork? All things indeed are pure. What about that pig? All things indeed are pure. Pork chop. All things indeed are pure. Hog moths. All things indeed are pure. Pig knuckles. All things indeed are pure. Shitlings. All things indeed are pure. This is what the Bible said, not For, me. That's right. Not me, the Bible. For meat destroyed not the we work of God. We are not under the Old Testament law. Amen. One greater than Moses came here. That's right. Jesus Amen. is greater than Moses. Oh, yeah. Who will take God? What did he say? For me, destroy not the work of God. Listen, listen. Some of these fellas now I'm talking about, you know, pork this, pork that. They have no idea. So many of them was raised up on pork. <laughs> That's right. I mean, don't you know somebody, some, some, some time years ago, parents made all the salt maybe they had. Yeah. Amen. That's, maybe that's all they had. That's right. Amen. Gave that, gave that baby that fat back and fried it, deep fried it. That's right. Amen. Start crunching it with them biscuits and gravy. Amen. 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 Glory to God. But if you choose not to eat it, fine. Yeah. But if you choose not to eat it, one cannot condemn the one that do eat it. That do. Real quick. For, for me destroyed not the work of God. They don't destroy God's work. All things indeed are pure. All things indeed are pure. But it is evil for that man who eateth with offense. Wait a minute. It's evil if you offended by it. Right. See, if I know, if I had you at my house and I know that you don't eat pork, my love for you as my sister, we won't even serve it. That's right. Out of respect to you. Right. But I have to know it first. That's right. If I know you don't eat fish, mm -hmm. I won't serve it. 
out of respect and my love for you as a brother and as a sister. That's right. All right? It is good not, it is good neither to eat flesh. It is good neither to eat flesh. Nor to drink wine. Nor to drink wine. Nor anything nor whereby thy anything brother stumbleth. that will make your brother stumble. Or is offended. Do you see it? Or is made weak. If me serving a ginger ale soda make you weak, I ain't, I ain't going to have it. I'm going to have it. I'll wait till you leave, then drink it. That's right. Huh? If chocolate cake offend you. Yeah. Anything. The Bible says what? Nor anything. Anything. Whereby thy brother stumbleth or is offended if or is made brother, brother weak. David come to my house and I got chocolate cake there and they said, oh, Pastor Jennings, you know, man, I'm, I'm highly offended by it. You know, and if I didn't know it, then I'm going to repent to him because I didn't know it. But if I do know it, and then I'm going to deliberately try to force it upon him, I'm not showing brotherly love to my brother. That's right. So when David come, I tell my wife, hide the cake. <laughs> hide all the chocolate cake. Hide all of it. That's right. It offends David. She's going to say, what? It offends him. Hide all of it. We we'll eat it when he leaves. Amen. <laughs> Glory to God. Amen. And what's the other part of your question? Sabbath day, and what else? Having your head covered. 11 chapter, the book of 1 Corinthians, if you will. 1 Corinthians chapter 11, and we'll start at verse 1. You know the preachers who lack ability in explaining the Bible, they often look at the scripture that says, a hair is a covering. There's three words I want you to pay attention to in the 11th chapter of 1 Corinthians. 1 Corinthians. Covered, uncovered, covering. That's right. Covered, uncovered, covering. That's right. Three different words, mm -hmm. three different meanings. Right. Listen good. First Corinthians chapter 11, and we'll start at verse 1. All right. Be ye followers of me, even as I also am of Christ. Yeah. Now I praise you, brethren. I that, praise you, brothers. That ye remember me in all things. Uh -huh. And keep the ordinances as I deliver them to you. All right. But I would have you know that the head of every man is Christ. I want you to know the head of every man is Christ. And the head of the, head woman, of the woman is the man. Is, uh, hey, that, 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 the house has changed now. Yeah. Giants change now. Now the men, they so henpecked, the women are the head. That's right. The women wearing the pants and the men wearing the dresses. That's right. Women, she's strolling and the man, he's switching. Switching. <laughs> the women got calluses and the man got red nails. Amen. Everything done changed now. Yeah. All right. And the head of the woman is the man. The head of the woman is the man. And the head of Christ is God. What else? Every man praying or Every... prophesying, having his head covered. Now, it ain't talking about putting hair on. Every man that pray or prophesy, or every man that worship God having his head covered, covered, dishonoreth his head. You see, us men, we can't go before God in prayer and trying to worship God like this. No. Because God is our head, right. and we dishonor God if we do it. That's right. So the Jews got to take off that little beam. Yeah. And the Muslim got to take his kufi off. That's right. Because when you have your head covered trying to pray, you dishonor Honor. your creator. Amen. All right. But every woman. Every woman. That prayeth or prophesies. That prayeth or prophesies. With her head. And she got her head. Uncovered. Head. 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 It ain't talking about her not having no hair. No. It's dealing with having head covered or uncovered. Uncovered. If a woman pray or prophesy having her head. Uncovered. Bareheaded. Dishonoreth her head. And her head is the man. That's right. Bible said the head of every woman is the man. Is the man. I had one woman say, well, Pastor Jenny, I'm not married. and ain't no man over me. I said the Bible didn't say the head of every woman is just a married man. No. The Bible said the head of every woman is the man. The man. Period. Period. <laughs> she looked at me and just said, hmm. <laughs> <laughs> I, I can't change that. That's right. All right, let's look at this now. Come on. But every woman that prayeth or prophesieth with her head uncovered dishonoreth her head. Now, when you don't have your head covered and wish up, you dishonor the man. Mm -hmm. This hair is a covering. That's right. You got covered. You got uncovered. uncovered. Let's read covering. For if the for give chapter and verse, give covering. 
Now in 1 Corinthians chapter 11, down at verse 15. Listen. But if a woman have long hair, it is a glory to her. Yes. For her hair is given her for a covering. Oh, covering. Covering. Not that it cover. That's right. The word covering is incomplete. That's right. I often make this example. If me and my brothers lay in carpet, and you come in and say, Pastor Jenny, what y'all doing? I say, sis, we, we lay in carpet. We are covering the floor. Come back in 15 minutes, then the floor will be covered. covered. Covering is incomplete. Right. So when you got your hair, it's just like you mothers, if it's wintertime out there, you let your daughters go out and play, and it's cold. You say, girl, don't you go out there with nothing on your head? Put something on your head. Cover your head. Cover. She's born with a covering. Her hair is a covering. Right. But it's incomplete. So you tell her to cover. That's right. The covering. That's right. So hair is nothing but a covering. But you must cover the covering. That's right. As it stands now, your covering is uncovered. Covered. Glory to God because there's nothing on it. That's right. That's what the Bible says, talking about the angels in heaven. For this cause, give chapter and verse. First Corinthians chapter eleven, now at verse ten. For this reason, ought the woman to have power on her head? Ought the woman to have power uh, on her head because, because of what? Because of the angels. When you have your head covered, that shows recognition and respect, right. not just to men on earth, but to the angels in heaven. Angels in heaven. That's why our women are told to cover their head. Because it is the order of God. That's right. Not only does it show respect to men on earth, so I said, but it said because of the angels. What do the angels got to do with man? Because the angels bear the shape of man. Yeah. In the book of Daniel, Daniel say, even the man Gabriel, Gabriel. flew swiftly unto me. unto me. Gabriel and the angels bear the shape of men. Of men. So when a woman have her head covered, it shows honor on yeah. earth and shows honor to heaven. Yeah. That's why she got to have her head covered. Yeah. All right. Any more questions? Yes, let, let me get the guest, June. Yes, mother. Oh, yes, I get into that scripture. Matthew chapter 19, 19 verse 9. Yes, and, and, and then when you leave Matthew, before mm -hmm. we get Corinthians, I want to get the 10th chapter, Mark. Right. All right. Matthew chapter 19, we're at verse 9. Who's giving the correct time, brothers and sisters? Who's giving the correct time, brothers? What we got? Five after two. Five after two? All right. We'll be getting a few more questions, then we'll let you go, because we'll be back at 5 o'clock. Mm -hmm. I'm the guest. You're the host, so don't go running home. Go eat, <laughs> come back. Amen. All right, come on. Matthew 19 and verse 9. Listen. And I say unto you, whosoever shall put away his wife. I want you to look at this closely. As I say over the television, listen at the language of the scripture. Right. Whosoever. Whosoever shall put away his wife. Shall put away his wife. Except it be for fornication, and shall marry another, committeth what? adultery. All right, let's have a rap session. Whoever put away his wife. Wife. All right, let's talk. And look at the language. Preachers have said, well, on the grounds of adultery, you can go ahead and put her away. Yeah. Read that again. Whosoever shall put away his wife, except it be for fornication. What married woman fornicate? Hmm. <laughs> Amen. It ain't a married woman on the earth ever went to court and was charged with fornication. <laughs> That's right. A married woman is charged with adultery. Yeah. So the fornicated wife is not talking about the married wife. That's right. The fornicated wife is talking about the espoused wife. Spouse. You'll find that in the first chapter of the book of Matthew. Matthew chapter one, and we're starting at verse 18. You gotta make the Bible harmonize. That's right. Listen at this, you know when uh, Mary was conceived by the Holy Ghost, the man child Jesus, Joseph ain't know what was going on. Amen. And Joseph did not want to put her away because of adultery, mm -hmm. because they wasn't married yet. Right. But I want you to look at what Joseph was called 
and what married was called, and yet they were not married. That's Listen. Right. Matthew chapter 1, we're at verse 18. Real quick. Now the birth of Jesus Christ was on this wise. Uh -huh. When as his mother Mary was espoused to Joseph. All right, when you espouse, what is that relationship? Engaged. What is it? Engaged. Everybody agree that when you espouse, you are engaged, correct? Yes. Now, look at what title that she had as an espoused person. Listen. When as his mother Mary was espoused to Joseph, uh -huh. before they came together, she was found with child of the Holy Ghost. Yes. Then Joseph, her husband. Whoa, 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 whoa. Hmm. What was their relationship? Mary was espoused to Joseph. What was Joseph called? Joseph, her husband. What was their relationship? Mary was espoused to Joseph. What was they called? Jo then Joseph, her husband. It wasn't marriage yet. It wasn't marriage yet. But she, he had the title. Husband. That's right. Read on. Being a just man and not willing to make her a public example was minded to put her away privately. Oh. Was minded. He didn't know that this thing was of the Holy Ghost. Right. He actually thought that Mary went out there and commit fornication. Right. So he wanted to put her away put privately. Her away privately. Me, he ain't wanted to embarrass her. That's right. But then the angel stepped in. But while he thought on these things. While he was thinking about getting rid of her. Behold, the angel of the Lord appeared unto him in a dream. Is that what? Saying, Joseph, thou son of David. What? Fear not to take unto thee Mary thy wife. But what was their relationship? Mary was espoused to Joseph. But what was Mary called? Mary thy wife. But what was their relationship? Mary was espoused to Joseph. But what was they called? Mary thy wife, Joseph her husband. Now let's go back to the 19th chapter of Matthew so I can straighten you out real good because the Bible's dealing with two different women here. That's right. All right? Back in Matthew 19 and at verse 9. Uh -huh. And I say unto you, whosoever shall put away his wife, except it be for fornication, and shall marry another committeth adultery. And? And whoso marrieth her which is put away, doeth commit adultery. The only way a man can commit adultery when he marries someone else, he has to already be married. Already be married. Now, let's balance that out with the 10th chapter of the book of Mark, Mark and listen at what Jesus said. Mark chapter 10, and we're at verse 11. Yeah. And he saith unto them. Begin at verse 10. At verse 10. And in the house his disciples asked him again of the same matter. And he saith unto them. Verse 9. Verse 9. Uh, yeah. What therefore God hath joined together. Verse 8. Verse 8. And they twain shall be one flesh. Man, just start at one. We'll Come on, we'll be quick. We'll start at verse one. Lord, that God, we well just go on and get all of it. Because when you deal with this divorce, that wrecks people's houses. Yes, it does. Hey, Amen. Because I have had women tell me, I don't care what you say, Pastor Jennings. I ain't giving up this man. I didn't write the Bible. Right. You take it up with God and see where you make the first resurrection. You're going to go to hell for a man? Mm. You're going to go to hell for a woman? Amen. A man or a woman is worth burning for right. eternity over? Hello. A man or a woman who eventually going to die anyway? That's right. Go ahead, take God here now. From, uh, Mark chapter 10, we're at verse 1. Listen. And he arose from thence and cometh into the coast of Judea Real by quick. the farther side of Jordan. Yeah. And the people resort unto him again. And as he was wont, he taught them again. Mm -hmm. And the Pharisees came to him and asked him, Is it lawful for a man to put away his wife? tempting him. And he answered and said unto them, what did Moses command you? Yeah, you see, back in Matthew, you know what Jesus told him? Moses, because of the hardness of your heart, Hearts. suffer you to do it. But from the beginning, it was not so. Right then, Jesus told you who divorce was for. It's mm -hmm. for people that got a hard heart. That's right. Moses let you do it. That's right. He, notice Jesus didn't say the Lord let you do it. No. He said Moses let you do it. Moses. But from the beginning, it wasn't meant to be. All right. And he answered and said unto them, what did Moses command you? And they said, Moses suffered. Moses write, let you do it. To write a bill of divorce. To write a bill of divorce. And to put her away. Uh -huh. And Jesus answered and said unto them, for the hardness of your heart. Oh, he wrote you this precept. Your heart was so hard. Your heart was so full of lust and wanted flesh. Moses wrote you that precept because he knew to what type of people you were. But from the beginning of the creation. Oh, he went back past Moses. That's right. From the beginning of creation. God made them male and he female. He made them male and female. For this cause shall a man leave his father and mother and cleave to his wife. Uh -huh. And they twain shall be one flesh. And what? So then they are no more twain but one flesh. Yeah. But therefore God hath joined together, let not man put asunder. All right. And in the house... His disciples asked him again of the same matter. What? And he saith unto them, 
Whosoever shall put Whoever shall put away his wife shall put away his wife and marry another and marry another committed adultery against her. Amen. Mm. Whoever whosoever get rid of their wife and marry another and get another woman committed adultery against her. You committed adultery against the wife and and if a woman shall put away her husband, if a woman get rid of her husband and be married to another and get another man, she committeth adultery. She commit adultery against him. That's right. Now, seventh chapter, hmm. first Corinthians. First Corinthians. Seventh chapter, first Corinthians. First Corinthians chapter seven. Yeah. Here, here the Bible. And at verse 39. All right, one thing about being a Christian, you ain't jumping over this scripture. <laughs> no. Oh, no. no Pastor Jesus, no. I don't believe it. My reverend told me, I don't care what your reverend told me. I'm going to hear what God says. That's right. God, this will be here when your reverend is dead and the worms eat him up. That's right. That's right. The Bible says. First Corinthians 7 and verse 39. The wife is bound by the law. How long? As long as her husband liveth. You better emphasize on the length of time again. The, the wife is bound by the law. How long? As long as her husband liveth. What? <laughs> then what? But. But. If her husband be dead. No, if the husband be in jail. If her husband be dead. If he's an alcoholic. If her husband be dead. If the husband cheat. If her husband be dead. If the, if the husband wake up short. If her husband be dead. Bald. Dead. Blind. Dead. Lost his teeth. Dead. One eye out. Dead. Crippled. Dead. Dying. Dead. Dying. Dead. Dying. Dead. On parole. Dead. <laughs> Amen. Amen. This is plain. Amen. And I'm going to tell you right now, a lot of preachers are going to hell. That's right. Because they're leading people and they got second and third wives. That's right. And some of you folk in these churches know it. But yeah. because you got other wives and other husbands, you are follow a preacher like that because you know he can't say nothing against you right. because he'll condemn his own self. That's right. That's right. What if God says. But if a husband be dead. Dead, dead, dead. dead. Hey, sister, your husband got to be dead and you can't help it. No. Can't put nothing in his grits. <laughs> Glory to God. What did he say? But if her husband be dead. Then what? She is at liberty to be married to whom she will. Only? Only in the Lord. Seventh chapter of the book of Romans. Begin Amen. at verse one. Romans chapter seven. Begin at verse one. My, 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 my. Romans chapter 7 and oh, we're at verse 1. Read to God. Do you hear? Know you not, brethren? Uh oh, look at it. It jumps on the men again. That's right. Know ye not, brethren? For I speak to them that know the law. You know what the law said. How that the law hath dominion over a man as long as he liveth. Look how plain it is. What is it? For the woman which hath an husband. All right, sister. Mm -hmm. You got a husband? Is bound by the law how, to how, her husband. How long is she married to him? So long as he liveth. Mm. So long as he liveth. You know Bill ain't dead. Why you got Charlie? That's right. Fred ain't dead. Why you got Barney? That's right. Abbott is not dead. Why do you got Costello? Amen. Amen. Jerry is not dead. Why you got Dean? <laughs> That's right. The Bible speaks plain. For the woman which hath an husband. The woman that got a husband. Is bound by the law to her husband. How long? So long as he liveth. Then what? But if the husband be dead. If the husband be dead. She is loosed from the law of her husband. Then she is free from the law of the husband. So then if. Uh-oh. If. Uh-oh. While her husband uh -oh. liveth. Uh oh. If. Warning. That's right. Warning. That's right. If. If while her husband liveth. Your husband may be out there working on a ship, on the docks, and everything else, but he's still living. Still living. I don't care if you're on a respirator and it's just breathing. You go check. Bill dead? No. <laughs> you gotta wait till there's a flatliner. 
That's right. <laughs> Bible speaks plain here. So then if, while her husband liveth, while her husband lives, she be married to another man. If your husband is alive, why, and you are married to another man, what did God call her? She shall be called an adulteress. But she says she's a Christian. She shall be called an adulteress. But she's working on an usher boy. She shall be called an adulteress. She's singing on the choir. She shall be called an adulteress. They're giving her appreciation service. She shall be called an adulteress. But she's the pastor's wife. She shall be called an adulteress. Your sister. An adulteress. Your mama. An adulteress. Your grandmama. An adulteress. Your aunt. An adulteress. Your niece. An adulteress. Your daughter. An adulteress. You. An adulteress. Amen. I didn't write that. No. Left up to me, I let you all free. <laughs> That's right. Or it take God, but it's God law. It's God's law. When that man got a first wife and he got a second one, he's an adultery. An adulteress. And that woman who never had a husband is married to a man who got a living wife. That man ain't your wife. Yeah. That man ain't your husband. In fact, while you're living with the man, woman, and you have never been married, you're living in fornication. Yeah. That man got a living wife. He's living in adultery. That's right. And vice versa. Mm -hmm. If the woman got a living husband and the man she's married to ain't never had been married before, but yet the woman he's married to got a living husband, that woman is living in adultery, and that man is living in fornication. That's right. So, brother, you got to stop driving somebody else's car. Yeah. That's right. Mm -hmm. And sister, you got to stop driving somebody else's car. That's right. You got to get rid of that spare tire. That's right. Your tire may be flat. <laughs> mm -hmm. You got to get rid of that good year and go back to good your year. Michelin. That's right. Amen. Amen. Yes, sir. If the wife wants to divorce you and she heard it and she don't want to receive it, don't you participate in signing no divorce papers. If she wants to be wicked, then let her do on her own. The Bible says do not after their works. She's going to give an account to God for the deeds that are done in her body. Right. Yes, sir. Put them away. When the Bible talking about putting them away, it's talking about divorce. divorce. One scripture says in the Old Testament, God says he hate putting away. Hate putting away. He hate divorce. Yes, ma'am. What if the man beating the woman? Excellent question. Seventh chapter of the book of 1 Corinthians, begin at verse 10. 1 Corinthians chapter 7. There ain't no woman under the sun should tolerate being beat by no man. That's right. No woman. That's right. So I'm going to tell you what the Bible permits First the woman to do. First Corinthians because a man is not a man to be the woman. Right. He ought to be thrown in jail. That's right. Throw him in jail. Lock him up. Lock him up. I don't care if he go to church and shout all day. Let the police stand at the door. And when he's done shouting, cuff him. <laughs> cuff him. That's right. Huh? Cuff him. That's right. Mom, he's done shouting and he put that last leg down. Lock him up. Lock him up. <laughs> Let him walk right to the car. Lock him up. That's right. What did he say here? First Corinthians chapter 7 and we're at verse 10. All right. First Corinthians chapter 7 and verse 10. Listen at this. And unto the married I command. Uh-oh. Mm -hmm. Unto the married I command, yet not I, but, but. But the Lord. The Lord. Let not the wife depart from her husband. Now, God says. I don't want the wife to leave the husband, but God is wise. He know everybody ain't going to stay together. So look at what he says. First, he gave what he preferred not to happen. Let not the wife depart from the husband. What? But. Oh. But. But. And if she depart. If she do leave. Let her remain unmarried. She can't leave and marry somebody else. Right. And she can't leave and start another relationship. That's right. Because the Bible said let her remain unmarried. unmarried. Meaning, once she done left that marriage, that abusive marriage, she can't get involved with nobody else. No. God didn't say leave one marriage and get another one. No. Let her remain unmarried. Then what? Or, or be reconciled to her husband. So the Bible say if she depart, do what? Let her. But, and if she if depart, she depart, let her remain unmarried. All right. Or be reconciled to her husband. Verse 10. If Verse she depart, let her depart. And unto the married I command, yet not I but the Lord. Yes. Let not the wife depart from her husband. Then what? But, and if she depart, if she depart, let her remain unmarried. Or she be said, the Bible is justifying separation here. Right. 
That's why it says, if she depart. If she depart. God know everybody ain't going to stay together. Right. So if you want to separate, mm -hmm. you can separate. Right. It is divorce that God don't allow. Right. Anytime a woman is getting beat and kicked and abused, she got a, she's justified in separation. Mm -hmm. If she separate from that husband, mm -hmm. but she can't get another one because he ain't dead yet. That's right. She can't get another one because he ain't dead. That That's abusive right. devil, devil is not dead. Yeah. And the moment you get involved with another man yeah. and start sleeping with another man, you commit adultery when you sleep with him. Right. Now, if you start living with another man, now you're living in adultery. That's right. There's commit adultery and there's living in adultery. Right. Living in adultery, you're already married and you're actually living with, a, with someone. You got a relationship with him. Right. Commit, you just pop, bing, 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 bing. <laughs> Pop and go. Bing, adultery. Bing, adultery. Bing. Now you want to live with him. Yeah. Now you're living in it. Living in it. And I can't give you another one until he died. Dies. Doesn't matter how wicked and how abusive he may be, he got to die yeah. before God give you another one. Not Pastor Jennings. Before God give you permission to get another one, that demon got to die. To die. All right. Yes, sister. All that, all that old literature and stuff. True. <laughs> you can get rid of all that fake literature. All that literature from these false religions, throw it all away. The Bible. It's right. Yeah. Nothing wrong with the Bible. The problem is the ones that's trying to preach from the Bible. From the Bible. Now, if you can burn them and be saved, I'd be right with you. <laughs> you can keep the Bible. But the problem is not in the Bible. The problem is in the pulpit. Right. The Bible is not the problem. God's word is perfect. God said his word endure forever. Yeah. Problem ain't the Bible. Problem is these fellows that's up here yeah. call themselves preaching from the Bible. Yeah. What's that? You can burn all that other literature and all that junk up. <laughs> all right. All right. Let me give me a few more questions. Yes, June. The Bible says Paul used the term Lord Jesus when he baptized John disciples. Well, Paul just said, Lord Jesus, and Peter said, Jesus Christ. No one baptized in the Bible and said, Lord Jesus Christ, or Jesus' name, or Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Right. There's only two statements that was made by the apostles. Baptism in the name of the Lord Jesus, and baptism in the name of Jesus Christ, nothing else. Nothing else. The Bible said it shall proceed no further. All right, I'm gone. I was going to quit. One more. Come on, son. A woman keeping her name and, and have both of them, have both last names. The Bible says where there is no law, there is no transgression. She haven't violated no law if she hold on to her last name. And she haven't violated no law if she implement the last name of her husband. She's still one with her husband. Right. All right. The Bible says where there is no law, there is no transgression. So I can't preach against something that the Bible never said is something wrong. All right. All right. I'm going to quit. Thank God. For all of you. All right. Because my brother's an elder statement, so I said I was going to quit. Come on, brother. Let me, you'll be the last one. Yes, sir. He'll be the last one. Are we clear? He'll be the last one. <laughs> <laughs> Come on, sir. Yes, sir. Thank you. 
Yes, sir. On last night, you were talking about communion and the cup. Now, you know, I, I know I just said I'm undone, unclean, and that could be me too. So if we're taking communion, I, I, and I'm asking a question for it. Righteousness and damnation. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. So when we really have just one cup. Yes, sir. And we all take communion. Yes, all right. Let, let, let me answer you with the communion. Give me the book of Corinthians. First Corinthians chapter 11. And we'll start reading in verse 23. I'm going to pose a question to you from the Apostle Paul. Give chapter and verse again. First Corinthians, first Corinthians chapter 11. And we'll start at verse 22. All right. What? What? What's, that, your, what's your name again, brother? Ford. Brother Ford. Like a fortune cookie. <laughs> Brother Fortune. What did he say? What? What? Have ye not houses to eat and to Have drink in? Have ye not houses to eat and to drink in? Or despise ye the church of God? Oh, or do you despise God's church? And shame them which have and not. Shame them that don't have. What shall I say to you? What shall I say? Shall I praise you in this? I praise you not. What? For I have received of the Lord that which also I delivered unto you. Uh -huh. That the Lord Jesus, the same night in which he was betrayed, took bread. Yes. And when he had given thanks, he broke it and said, take eat. I want to get the communion of the Lord. Oh. 1 Corinthians chapter 10. All right, let's, let's, let's go up. 1 Corinthians chapter 10. Yeah. And we're at verse 16. All right. The cup of blessing which we bless. Give chapter and verse again. 1 Corinthians chapter 10 and we're at verse 16. Everyone follow me here. 1 Corinthians chapter 10 and verse 16. What is it? The cup of blessing. The cup of blessing. Which we bless. Which we pray over. Is it? Not the, communion not the communion of the blood of Christ? Oh, so fortune. Hmm. Is the cup the communion of the blood of Christ? Blood of Christ. Or is it the tray of glasses? Hmm. We have to stop there. See? That's right. This is, this is what everyone must know who serves the Lord. We got to have Bible for what we do when it points to Jesus. Right. Because through the years, even when Jesus walked earth, they sought to condemn him. Yeah. And if you notice Jesus, he always would back up his talk with the prophets because there was no New Testament written. That's right. So he would always refer to the prophets said this, the prophets said that. Now we got all of it. Oh. We can refer to the prophets, Jesus and the apostles. That's right. So somebody can see you serving the tray of glasses and ask the question, well, hey, Brother Fortune, the tray of glasses that you bless, is that the communion of the Lord or is it the cup? cup. And if you say the tray, they can say, well, where is it? Right. There's only one that died for us. Yeah. That's why the cup symbolized the death of one. That's right. Blood was shed from one. The apostle asked, is Christ divided? divided? All them tray of glasses, that's a bunch of division. Yeah. Only got one died for us. Oh, yeah. And your next statement was in reference to your son. Give me, I believe, the book of Ecclesiasticus mm -hmm. or the book of Sarich, if I'm correct. Amen. The third chapter. Third chapter of the book of Ecclesiasticus. And we'll start at verse 1. Real quick. Hear me, your father, O children, and do thereafter that ye may be safe. Do what? Hear me, your father, O children. Hear me, your father, children. And do thereafter. Do thereafter. That ye may be safe. So you can be right. For the Lord hath given the father Glory honor God. over the children. The Lord hath given the father honor, honor over, the children. over the children. And hath confirmed the authority. And hath confirmed the authority. Authority of the mother of the mother over the son over the son whoso honoreth his father whoever honor his father maketh an atonement for his sins mm. listen these young men got to understand honoring your father before you can honor the lord of heaven and earth yeah. you first got to honor your father that's right a lot of things have happened in the lives of young men because of the way they treated their mother and their father. Yeah. 
If you disregard your mother and your father, he that forsaketh his father. Uh oh. Now in the book of Ecclesiastes 3 and verse 16. He that forsaketh his father, reject his father, is as a blasphemer. Mm. Glory to God. Amen. He that reject his father, his pop, is as a blasphemer. It's just like you reject God. And he that angereth his mother, he that angereth his mother, is cursed of God. I told you this is Bible. Bible. Glory to God. Amen. It doesn't matter if you disagree with your father, or even if your father's a sinner or your mother's a sinner. The God of heaven still said, honor, honor. thine father honor. and thine mother, mother, that your days might be prolonged. He that honor, honoreth his father, he that honoreth his father, shall have a long life. Glory to God. Amen. I wish I could gather every young man up all over. That's why it shocks so many people to see so many men in the church. You don't see men in church. No. You see men in Islam, but you don't see them in church. In church. If a man, this is what we teach our young sisters. If a man can't respect his mama, you got to be out your mind to think he's going to respect you. That's right. The man will slap and cuss his mama out. Sister, you might as well prepare your jaw. That's right. You might as well get in position. In position. If he can't respect and honor the woman that birthed him into this world. That's true. What do you think he going to do to you? We teach our young men, before you marry, if you're working, give your mother some money. That's Don't right. just eat, 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 eat. Contribute something to the house. Yeah. Don't just eat and sleep. Contribute something. That's right. And he, this is old school teaching. Yeah. It's old school. Yeah. It is this type of teaching that, man, it's obsolete now. So yes, we're, we're very strict on how our brothers should treat mothers, fathers, and women at large. Mm -hmm. And I am adamant about our sisters respecting yourself, right. loving yourself, because if you respect God, God will teach you how to love yourself. That's right. Thank you for listening, brothers and sisters. Anybody want to be baptized in water? In the name of Jesus Christ, stand on your feet. Anybody want to get the right baptism and get themselves right with God? So you can be right, stand on your feet. You that want to be baptized, you see them that's standing back there? Please go where they are, please. If you're not baptized in the name of Jesus Christ, your sins yet remain. You're still a sinner. Bible ain't tell you bow your head and raise your hands. Bible ain't never told you join the church. Bible ain't tell you accept Christ right where you sit at. Bible didn't tell you get on the mourner's bench and get several different works of grace. Bible says repent and be baptized, every one of you, in the name of Jesus Christ for the remission of sins, and you shall, glory to God, receive the gift of the Holy Ghost. If you're not baptized, you're still a sinner. That's right. You can go to a church and hold a preacher's hand and pray some sinner's prayer that, ain't, that don't even exist in the Bible. Lord Jesus, you did that, didn't you? Yes, I did. How many times did you do that? I can't even count them, Pastor. You still remember the words? Yes. It's still in you? Yes. Tell, tell them what, what, what is it? Lord Jesus, forgive me of my sins. Wash me white as snow. Glory to God. Make me clean. Save my soul. Yes. In the name of Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. Amen. <laughs> You didn't get saved, did you? No, I didn't. <laughs> <laughs> you haven't repented of your sins and went down in water. Your sins yet remain. Yeah, remain. Spread the word, Monroe. First church will be here 29th of next month. We're starting oh, yeah. our first official service. Yeah. Our first official service for the Monroe area. Let your friends know. Let your family know. Let your pastor know. <laughs> Come walk with the truth of the gospel. If they got a problem with it, they can take it up with Pastor Jennings. Amen. Don't waste your time and argue with them. Don't fight with them. Just come on and walk with the word of God. The end of all things is at hand. And truly, we're living in the last days. 
And it's time now for them that are sincere to get on God's side. Because one thing about time, time ain't waiting for nobody. No. We've been lied to for years. We've been conned by preachers for years. We've been taken advantage of for years. The most blessed and precious moment in life is when God opened my eyes and now I can serve him the way he really want. I can do it the way he tell me to That's do it. That's right. I can get an understanding. You ain't gonna be able to do everything that you're taught to do overnight, but that don't mean it won't be preached. Right. We, got, we still got the preaching. That's right. If you're a homosexual, come on in here. Mm -hmm. I'ma pull salt on you. <laughs> I ain't gonna throw you out. No. No, I ain't gonna throw you out. I'm gonna keep working on you until the sugar fall out. Yeah. While you clapping, I'm gonna keep thumping salt till you go back. I, I'm all right now, Pastor. <laughs> 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 Glory to God. Oh, really? yeah. Now, Monroe, please don't ask. Pastor Jenna, you gonna be here all the time? You know that's impossible. I travel around the world, set building churches and laboring in word and doctrine, but God willing, on the 29th, I'll be here. Wonderful. God willing, on the 29th, I'll be here. I'll be here for the first original setup. I'll be here, and Williams will be here, and some more brothers will be here, and some of the saints, probably some of the other churches may be here. But Monroe, the 29th of April, God willing, Old troublemaker being down, hanging and banging with the word of God. Amen. All right, we're going to let you go. We'll be back 5 o'clock to start our evening session. Let us all stand. Under him that is able to keep you from falling and present you faultless before the presence of his glory, the exceeding joy to the only wise God, our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. To him be glory and power both now and forever. Brothers and sisters, say amen.